I guess I'll start off with a softball. Um, just what was summer as NBA champion Pat Connaughton like? Uh, multiple trips. I know the Larry O came along with you a couple different times. Just what was that offseason like for you? Uh, the offseason was great. Um, it was cool to be able to experience, um, you know, winning an NBA championship with friends and family. It was cool to be able to bring uh, the NBA trophy back home uh, to my house with my family, uh, to bring it to my high school, a place where, you know, 10 years ago we won the first state championship the high school's ever had. You know, five years ago I was able to, um, you know, get the court named after we make a donation. And, you know, tens of years later I'm bringing the NBA championship trophy back, speaking to the student athletes, talking to them about, being in their shoes, being a student at that school 10 years prior and uh, just seeing how far, you know, I've come was really unique, really special, really fun to, you know, be a part of with, you know, my friends, my family back home. Uh, we'll talk about it all year, but just kind of the idea of fighting complacency. If for years it had been what you guys can't do, you guys aren't good enough, and now you're the champs, you are good enough. How do you kind of stay on top of the mountain? Yeah, you know, I think – it was a storybook ending for us, right, last year. Uh, you know, but stories have sequels. Stories have trilogies. You know, at the end of the day, um, it's about continuing the next story, continuing the next book. And uh, while you'll always hold the torch for the 2021 NBA season uh, and have that be, you know, the pinnacle of, you know, such a wild year, uh, the story ended. You know, it had a storybook ending. Now it's about how do you start up the next one? How do you make sure that uh, you are putting your best foot forth every single day uh, to write the next story and understand how we wrote the first story, how we were able to get to where we were? It took, you know, ebbs and flows. It took adversity. It took ups and downs, but it took the continuity, the togetherness, togetherness, uh, and the mentality of getting better each and every single day uh, because you can't win a championship in October, can't win a championship on the first day of training camp, but you can focus on the journey each and every day. Kind of along those same lines, is it a different feeling entering this season knowing you guys are the reigning NBA champions? And how excited are you to know that on opening night you're going to get your championship rings? That's got to be a little different. Yeah, it's it's definitely different. I would say... Uh, if anything, it should just make us confident. But, um, you know, confidence comes with responsibility, right? You don't want to be overly confident. You want to be confident enough in our abilities, which we have all been the last three years I've been here. We've all been confident that we can accomplish it. But then when you actually accomplish it, now the rest of the world knows you can accomplish it. You did accomplish it. Um, so you don't want to inflate the confidence that we already had. You want to continue to have that edge. And so uh, experiencing the ring ceremony on opening night uh, will, I think, officially wrap up last season. It'll be a really special moment uh, to share with teammates, to share with this organization, but most importantly to share with you know the fan base. Uh, you know, I've seen uh, over the course of this summer through some of my business relationships, some of my foundation relationships, uh, you know, families who uh, have been generational season ticket holders, and uh, their parents talk about the championship that was won 50 years ago and the kids never knew if they were going to get to one or when it was won they were two or three years old and they didn't really get to experience it so to see how you know rabid this fan base is and how tight-knit of a community this place is uh, I think that's what's going to make it so special to be able to share that moment to share that banner to share those rings uh, with the fan base of the Milwaukee Bucks with the city with the state um, and get excited about trying to continue, uh, you know, the journey that we've started over the last few years. Earlier, John Horst was saying that he thought this team might be better, but in a different way from what you, the people you have coming back, the changes that have been made to the roster, what do you think y'all have right now and how it might compare to what you had a year ago? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the difficult thing about the NBA is there's a business to it, right? So your teammates change. Uh, your team may change uh, depending where you go, depending who you're playing for, depending who you're playing with. But uh, to have a lot of the core group of guys back to play alongside, you know, Drew, Giannis, Chris, 
Dante, George is back, Bobby's back. Like to have everybody back, Coach Bud, John Horse, like to have everybody back within the organization that um, I would say we've gone through this journey on the last three years, and then to add a incredible group of talented basketball players to the mix, uh, I think it creates uh, a level of confidence and a level of yeah, this team might be better. It's going to be different, and we have to learn, and we have to learn together, and we have to learn how to play together, and we have to learn how to fight through adversity together. But, uh, you know, the talent level is there. The depth is there. uh, And I think the character of each and every single guy is there. And I think that's what uh, got us through, you know, the first two years I was here where we, you know, fell short uh, and to, you know, finish it off last year. So it's about making sure – the new guys understand uh, and learn both from example and from vocal leadership uh, from the guys who have been here. We got to talk to Sammy earlier, and he said, you know, coming from the Boston Celtics, it wasn't about going somewhere about who had championships. It was about going somewhere where you saw opportunity and going somewhere where the culture was stable and it was a good culture. You know, maybe you guys – don't go back to back. Maybe you don't win five championships, but is there pride in what has been established here in Milwaukee in a smaller market that this is a place where people want to go to, whether you're winning or not? Yeah, I would say, look, um, even falling short the first two years, just because you have the best team or one of the best teams doesn't guarantee you winning an NBA championship. It's hard. Um, you know, it's, you have to stay healthy. You have to make sure there's so many things. There's luck involved. There's bounces of the basketball. There's good shooting nights, bad shooting nights, whatever. It's really hard to win an NBA championship no matter how good you are. You could be the best team in the regular season for eight straight years and never win one. Um, but I think what solidifies a career, an organization, a growth is putting yourself in a position to have a chance to win one on a yearly basis. Now, the next step is putting yourself in a position to be in contention, to be in the finals, to be in the uh, uh, Eastern Conference Finals, whatever it is, to put yourself in a position to actually win it. But to have the potential to win one and to build an organization and be a part of an organization that has stabilized itself um, as a winning culture, a great culture to be a part of, and a winning culture – I think is, you know, in and of itself impressive. And now it's just about continuing to put ourselves in a position to be championship contenders and then using what we learned from last year to try to get us ourselves over the hump. Uh, Earlier, Bobby said P.J. Tucker is a one-of-one. I don't think any of us would disagree with that. Um, How does this team go about trying to replace him? You know, I don't, I don't know that it's about replacing P.J. Tucker. I think it's about understanding what this team has um, and playing to this team's strengths, right? Um, you know, a lot of people, I think, will make the comparison, well, you know, P.J. Tucker's gone and you added, you know, Rodney and Shemi and Grayson Allen and how are they going to replace P.J.? They're not going to replace P.J., but they have their own strengths that maybe P.J. didn't have. They have their own talent. And so how do we make sure we're playing in our best way for this team, the 2021-22 Milwaukee Bucks team? Last year's team with P.J. was great. It was a championship team. It literally happened. This year's team, it's going to be different. It's not about replacing PJ, but it's about making sure that we're playing to our strengths, we're playing to the new guys' strengths, we're putting them in position to have success, and we're putting ourselves in position to win ball games. Hey, Pat. Um, you mentioned a few times the togetherness and going through things together last season, and even the bubble to a degree, um, with the protocols and all the things you went through. This year will be different. Um, Mark Lazary and John Horst said most of the team is vaccinated. So going forward, some guys won't be together with you. Like just by rule, the league is made it that way. Do you anticipate either any team building or, you know, uh, chemistry <laughs> type of things that have to work through? Because for the first time now in a couple seasons, there, there's, it's not going to be the same for everyone, I guess, as you go through that. Yeah, I mean, look, similarly to taking it one game at a time, we have to control what we can control. 
And so for us, I think we're a tight knit group. I think we know each other more than just within the facility, more than just on the court, more than just as basketball players. Um, we have genuine relationships outside of the game, outside of the facility, outside of the team, um, friendships. And I would say that is going to be as important as ever because, um, you know, how we're able to interact as a team, who knows, TBD. But I think when we're able to interact as a team, when we're able to find ways to do team building stuff, when we're able to find ways to – simply get dinner or to, um, you know, have other experiences as a collective group, uh, it'll be special. It's what's kind of put ourselves in this position to have such great chemistry over the last three years. But we weren't able to do it sometimes last year. And we were able to obviously get through it. And we were able to make sure that we came out better for it on the other side. And so I think we got to control what we can control and make sure that we're developing uh, genuine relationships with each other where we can. Um I'm sure at this point in your career, you have an off-season routine. How does your body feel? I mean, you've had, what, 70 days <laughs> seventy days off? So, And then what did you have to maybe do to adjust to, A, get yourself ready, but also get you know healthier, <laughs> if you will? Yeah, you know, for me personally, I would say it's been unique, right? Usually you have an off-season. And I, I utilize the off-season to, let's just say, get better, get stronger, get faster, get quicker, get more athletic. Uh, because during the season, you have games. You have 82 games. You have playoffs. You have however game, many games it ends up being. is more about maintaining, trying to maintain. Well, the last two off-seasons have been kind of unique, right? We've gone from having a shutdown during the middle of COVID to going into the bubble to not really having an off-season, jumping right into a condensed season. So it's been a little interesting, and I would say the expedited off-seasons the last few years, I would say kind of came to light, took a toll on guys' bodies near the end of last year. Um, so ironically, I'd say my body feels better today than it did finishing last season. Uh, my athleticism feels more today than it did back then. But it's about making sure you individually do what you need to to put yourself in a position to not just last 82 games in the playoffs, but to excel in 82 games in the playoffs, right? So understanding the extra work that I need to put in before practice, after practice, things that are going to put me in a position to make games feel easier than what I do on non-game days. Whatever that might be, it's different for everybody. Uh, but for me, it's about making sure I'm putting in more work because that's what's helped my body feel the best. That's what helped my jumping ability, my quickness feel the best. And that's what uh, will hopefully get me back to showing off a few dunks during the season, uh, which I wasn't able to do last year.